Hello everyone! In this video we're going to bring stock propeller engines to new record speeds. To do this I'm going to use a new technique that I've discovered that can massively increase the performance of any stock propeller engine that uses reaction wheels. This technique increases the maximum torque of stock propeller engines by a little over 73%, can easily be adapted to existing craft, and does have one drawback and we'll get to that. In a recent video on my Monte Carlo River Race Challenge, I brought a stock prop plane through the course, and this was despite having previously said in a video, the stock prop Eve SSTO, that I had pledged not to do anything with stock propellers for a while due to the huge amount of investment I'd put into that. But this trick was a little too good to pass up, and I really wanted to feature what it could do and show you guys how to do it. To explain how this technique works, I'm going to have to bust out some math. Reaction wheels in KSP allow us to provide torque on our craft in three different axes. We can call these whatever we want. For ease, we're going to call it X, Y, and Z. To rotate something in the X, Y plane, we apply torque in the direction of the Z axis. If we're rotating counterclockwise, it's in the positive direction and in the negative direction for clockwise. For those who haven't studied rotational mechanics, it might seem a little strange for our torque vector to be perpendicular to the plane of rotation, but the usefulness of this convention will become clear in a minute. Correspondingly, rotation in the YZ plane has a torque vector along the X axis, and rotation in the XZ plane has a torque vector along the Y axis. Reaction wheels in KSP independently can provide torque along each of these axes which means they can apply torque along each one of these axes at once. When we do this, we can add up these torque vectors and get the vector sum of these three. This vector sum has a new direction distinct from any of that of its vector components and a magnitude equal to the square root of three times any one of them. This means that the large reaction wheel, which can provide 30 kilonewton meters of torque in a particular axis, now increases 73% to be able to provide us 52 kilonewton meters of torque. We do have a couple problems here. The first is, is that we're going to use three times as much electrical power. This is already a good trade, but there's some ways that we can mitigate this disadvantage, and I'm going to talk about that later. Currently, we have a more pressing problem, which is our torque vector is pointed in a very awkward and useless diagonal direction. If we try to use it as is, most of the torque is going to be lost, and this torque that's lost is actually going to tear our craft apart. Since we want our propellers to rotate in the plane perpendicular to the forward direction of our craft, we want our torque vector to be either directly forward or directly backward. We need to figure out what rotations we need to do to the point of control of the propeller module to get this to happen. If we could rotate around any axis, we could do this in just one rotational transformation, but it will be more useful for our purposes if we do this just with rotations around the x, y, and z axis. The first of these will be a rotation of negative 45 degrees about the y-axis. The second rotation is a little bit trickier to figure out, but with a little bit of trigonometry, we can see we need a rotation in the positive direction about the x-axis of arc sine of 1 over the square root of 3, which is equal to about 35.26 degrees. With some matrix algebra, we've verified that these transformations will transform our vector with a component of 1 along each axis, to the vector with a magnitude of 3 along the z-axis and a magnitude of 0 along the others. However, when I try to actually do these transformations in the editor, I'm going to run into a problem. Let's take a look. To demonstrate the problem I'm going to have with the editor, I'll place three ant engines on a cube, meaning the thrust of these three are all going to be orthogonal to each other. Until I've successfully performed the two rotations that I've just shown, the vector sum of my thrust is going to be pointing diagonally to the craft, resulting in torque. So let's try to do these rotations and see if my torque goes close to zero. The first rotation of 45 degrees works fine, but with the second rotation we run into a problem. In the KSP editor, when we do a rotational transformation, the axes available for us to rotate around moves with the part. So for our second rotation, where we want to rotate by arc sine of 1 over the square root of 3, the axes that we wanted to rotate around isn't available to us. The solution to this problem is surprisingly simple. By reversing the order of the transformations and ignoring the transformation of the axes that we rotate around, we achieve the original transformation that we are going for. So you don't have to take this on faith, and because we love math on this channel, I'm going to do a quick proof of why this works. 
If you haven't studied linear algebra, this may appear a bit Greek, but don't worry, we'll be back to KSP in a minute. We're going to let A and B represent the matrices of two arbitrary linear transformations. X is going to represent an arbitrary vector. In the first case, where our axes stayed the same, we took our vector, first transformed it with one linear transformation, then with another linear transformation, and the result was a transformed vector. When we do this in the KSP editor, we're going to do the second transformation, B, first, and then the first transformation, A. However, we can't actually do transformation A. Since our axes have changed in the editor, this transformation is now different, so let's call it C. However, what the transformation represented by matrix C actually is, is the transformation represented by matrix A in the basis represented by matrix B. This means we can use a change of basics to rewrite matrix C in terms of matrices A and B. After substituting this for matrix C, matrices B and B inverse cancel out, and we're left with the same expression as we had with the first approach. This proves that the effect of transforming our axes with the part is negated by reversing the order of these transformations. Incidentally, this isn't true just for rotation, but for any linear transformation. And we can show that math works by going back to the KSP editor and showing with the antengines that if I do the 35-ish degree rotation first and then the 45 degree rotation, we have almost no torque, showing that we've lined these up almost perfectly. A little bit of torque remaining is due to the fact that 35 is not equivalent to 35.26 and because the part that it's attached to isn't exactly lined up. But it's close enough that it shows that this approach has worked. To apply this to a propeller engine, all we have to do is attach a small docking port, rotate it as I've just demonstrated, and then control the propeller from this part. We can now use our reaction wheel along the pitch, roll, and yaw axes and have 73% more torque than we would normally. The main drawback of this approach is that we're going to use three times as much electrical power. We have 73% more torque now, which will counteract some of it, but we're still going to have less newton meters of torque per unit of electricity. Now, even if we're using RTGs, this is still a good trade, and even when we factor in the mass of RTGs, this new engine is still more efficient. However, we can mitigate this disadvantage further by going with batteries instead of RTGs. This means that the craft isn't going to be able to fly for forever, but we can still get a really good range that's enough to do a lot of things and then we get a very high performance engine. If oriented properly, the rotational axes will appear as three congruent ovals when viewed from directly in front. To show the effectiveness of 73% more torque, I've built a stock propeller engine using this approach, put it in a low drag, low wind plane, and we're gonna see how fast we can get this thing to go. One of the main enemies of trying to go fast with propeller engines, both in KSP and in real life, is forward velocity eats away at the angle of attack of our propeller blades. The faster we go, the higher blade angle we need to maintain a non-zero angle of attack. As our angle of attack goes to zero, the thrust from our propeller goes to zero, and we won't be accelerating. However, a higher blade angle means a higher angle between the force off of the propeller blade and the forward direction, which is also going to decrease the thrust we have, and we're going to stop accelerating. Also, if we have a high blade angle and low forward velocity, we're going to have too much angle of attack, which will also prevent our propeller blades from providing enough forward thrust. The solution is variable pitch propeller blades. Here I'm going to start with a blade angle of 59 degrees, which is actually really high and totally not optimal for any speeds below 300 meters per second, but this engine is so powerful that it's still going to accelerate through here pretty quickly. After getting to 400 meters per second, I'm going to start steadily increasing my blade angle, getting it all the way up to around 78 degrees, where I fiddled around with it, trying to eke another couple meters per second out of the design. This got me all the way up to 1,053 meters per second, which is a lot more than I expected and well over Mach 3. I was still accelerating slowly at this point, but I had run out of electrical power, showing that there are some disadvantages to the battery approach. I decided to get some rapier engines to get me up to speed, 
to give my propeller engine more time to reach its terminal velocity. This got me up to 1,080 meters per second or 1,078 meters per second, depending on how strict you are about level flight. And I think this probably could be optimized a bit by trying different altitudes and slight differences in design, but I'm satisfied with this for now. And if I find some time, I might try to eke some more meters per second out of this. To close off this video, I'm gonna take a plane powered by this engine through my Monte Carlo River race course. I'll include a link to the river course in the description as well as to a recent video where I took a very similar plane through this course. In that video, my plane had way too much wing area, resulting in excessive drag, and I also didn't bother with changing the propeller pitch during the run. In this run, I'm going to start with a blade angle of 59 degrees, and then during a high speed section of the craft, I'm going to change that to 61 degrees. This might not sound like a big difference, but at this extremely high blade angle it is, and that's going to allow me to reach about another 40 meters per second. This run is going to take about 8 minutes, and I do think in this case that it ruins the feel of it to speed it up, so I'm going to let it play out in real time for those who want to see it. For everyone else, thank you very much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next one.